If you're looking on how to create your own custom brushes for Procreate 5, you're in the right place. After watching this video, you will know where are all the best settings for you to create your own personal brushes. And also, as a bonus, I'll teach you how to create my own very favorite custom brush. What's up guys, Lucas here. I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for video games and this channel is all about art and a creative life. So if that's something that you like, consider subscribing. Okay guys, so the way that we are going to do this is I'm gonna teach you how to create my favorite brush. It is this one, the LP Magic Chalk, which is an amazing brush. It's the one that I use to paint this and, and many other paintings. Super smooth, super responsive, and I really like how it paints. It leaves just the right amount of texture in my painting. So uh, uh, in, I'm gonna teach you how to create this brush and in the way, I'm gonna teach you how to create any type of brush that you want. So let's get started. To create your brushes, the first thing that you have to do is go to your brush library and tap on the plus icon. You're gonna create a brush in the folder that you're in and immediately you're going to be thrown into that brush studio, which is a new addition for Procreate 5, which is amazing. You have three columns right here. First, you have the categories or the, the properties of your brush. Then you have, the, or these are the categories. Then you have the properties for each of the categories. And then you have right here your drawing pad, which is where you can see your strokes. You can create them interactively. And the most amazing thing is that you can change them in real time. So that is amazing. Props to the guys at Savage for doing such an amazing work. If you want to, to clean this thing, you tab, tab right here in the drawing pad and you clear your drawing pen and you're ready to go. So the first brush that we are we have in our hands is a very boring brush. It's the most default one, circle, no texture. So we are going to fix this thing. The first thing that we are going to do is in the stroke, we are going to play with the spacing to put it not so wide that it looks like a dotted line and not so small that it makes our brush really heavy. So around 10% is a sweet, a sweet middle. Then right here in Streamline, this is something that maybe you would like to use. I will not use it, but I'm going to explain it. What Streamline does is that it's going to smooth your lines. This is without Streamline. And if you incre increment the Streamline, you can see that the brush kind of follows my, my pencil before it's set in the canvas. So that is something very useful for calligraphers or people that need precise and smooth strokes. Now we are not going to use it. I'm going to just leave it in zero and space it. You can leave it in 10 or 11. It doesn't make much difference. The next category is taper. And here is also very interesting. If you, for example, want to give your brush a taper in the point, you're going to increase the size and then select which tip you want this to affect. So you can see that now every brush stroke that I do finishes with this taper. That is something that I'm not going to use, but again, something very useful if you want to create. If you type right here, it's going to link both sides of the taper. So it's a nice way of, of, of playing with the properties of your brush if you want. This is very useful for people that play or use the iPad with the finger and not with the with the stylus. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to remove these guys in here and we are back to normal. The next one is the shape. And this is actually where I like to start editing my brushes or creating my brushes when I go into the brush studio. Here you have the shape of your brush and this is how your brush looks from, from imagine like the tip of your brush and you have a ton of, of different textures that already are included in Procreate to be able to change it. Just go right here to import, go to source library, and you're going to find a lot of textures. These ones are almost everything that you need. Now the brush, my favorite brush was made with uh, a tip name, um, infrared oil, infrared oil. And this one is one that I love because I really like square brushes after you choose the one that you like, you just tap in done and you can see that already your brush is much, much better. Here you have some things to play with. For example, you can play with the scatter of your brush. It's gonna give it like a cloudy feel. The rotation of your brush, if you don't want the rotation right here, or you can make the rotation right in the texture if you just rotate it with your hands like this. And this is actually a rotation that I prefer. I wanted to have the wider side in this axis. Then you can here, right again, you can rotate your brush down here if you want, 
or you have azimuth that is a very nice property that makes the the brush follow your strokes which is again something useful for people that I like for example calligraphy or something like that not what I'm looking for so I'm gonna turn that guy off and we continue okay nothing more important right here and let's go to the next one the next category is grain and this one is my second favorite of course because it's the one that makes the most difference in your brush after shape and this is the texture of the brush you can imagine that your the shape of your brush is kind of like the window through which you see the grain of your brush so let's go and edit this grain again it's similar to the shape you go in here you tap on import and source library and you have a ton of textures that procreate already includes so you your cover you don't need anything else inside of here now my favorite brush was made with a texture called recycled so I'm gonna just select it but of course you can just go there and experiment by the way you can uh, double tap with your fingers or tap with two fingers to change this texture if you want or rotate it as you want I'm gonna click and done and now my brush is looking much more like the brush that I wanted it's very close to what I want, but let's go through the next categories, okay? Rendering is also very interesting. By default, your brushes are going to come in intense glaze, which is my second favorite, but there is one that I really like for this brush and is that uniform glaze, which is gonna, if you see, is gonna make your brush strokes much, much smoother. So at the start, is gonna give you a very small, uh, smooth texture. And then as you press more and more, it's gonna take this, this texture of your uh, grain a little bit more. So that is exactly what I want for this brush. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Here you can play with some of these properties. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you that right here in grain, if you want to have more or less grain, you can go down here and for example, increase or decrease the depth or change for example the blending mode that is going to make really harsh changes on on how your your brush interacts with the, the texture so that is what you need to know now let's go down here uniform glaze we are ready to go wet mix is for brushes that you want to have some type of wet interaction with your between the strokes so it's kind of heavy let's give it a moment i hope that procreate doesn't crash on me let's erase this thing and let's create some some brush strokes you can see that when i in increase that dilution or increase the for example the charge the attack the pool of of my brush is going to change the interaction of one stroke over the other so these are useful things for when you want to create a brush that resembles some wet media like watercolor or oil or acrylics or something like that nothing that i'm looking for so because I want something dry, I'm just gonna pull all of those guys to the to the minimum, to zero, and I'm gonna clean the pad so that it's not heavy. Now, let's go to the next one, Color Dynamics. Color Dynamics is really cool. Again, a new addition from the guys of Procreate on Procreate 5, and what this does is that it creates some variation, color variation on your strokes. For example, if you click on here, Stamp Color Jitter, jitter is that how you say it, Jitter? You can increase the hue, for example, and saturation, and look what look what happens. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but what is happening is that the color of your stroke is gonna change in each of those stems. Remember when up here we changed the spacing? So you can see how each one of those stems is gonna be a different color. So let's go back down here, put again in 10% or something like that, and we can continue color dynamics. Now that is pretty cool if you want to have some type of uh, color, uh, texture in your paintings it resembles more like traditional painting it's a really cool way of giving some life to a, to a painting but let's see the next one this stroke stroke color jitter and this one is i don't know maybe cooler for for me and this one what it does is that you can let's put this two again up what it does is that it changes the color of your texture of your of your brush stroke every single time that you press it so isn't that awesome that is amazing it's for if you want to have a crazy colored painting you can just make this thing and it's gonna change the color of your stroke every time that is amazing so uh, pretty cool things to play with i'm gonna just drop these two guys back to zero because it's not something i want for this brush but something really cool to do uh, dynamics is also cool to do look how 
um, let me explain it first. Um, this one right here, for example, it plays with the speed. So if you want to create, let's create a very slow stroke and then suddenly accelerate. And look what this does. If I play with the size, it's going to make difference. Oh, I think that again, it's frozen. There we go. It's going to create different type of interactions with the size depending on the speed of the stroke that I that I made or the opacity so again something pretty cool if you maybe something cool if you're again drawing with your finger instead of the stylus nothing that I'm looking for for this brush but again something cool Apple Pencil this one is uh, the next most important after grain and shape and why is this so important is because if you're drawing with your with an, and stylus this is how the stylus interacts with your brush. So all the section right here is about pressure and all the ways right uh, down here is about tilt. So this one interacts with how much pressure you put in your brush and this one how much you, uh, yeah, you tilt your pencil towards the screen. So let's make this thing. Um, if you want your brushes, for example, a lot of people want their brushes to start small and then become bigger the more pressure that you put. So that is something that we can play with. Let's clean the, this one. Uh, you can see that it's small. And the more I press, not only it increases the opacity, which is this slider, but also it increases the size. So you can play with this. Maybe I will just leave it in a minimum. Flow is very much like opacity. Bleed is the amount of texture, so I'm not gonna play with that. Smoothing, just a little bit of smoothing. It creates nice edges and response I'm not gonna touch. Tilt is something that I don't like to, well, for me it's uncomfortable to play with the tilt because sometimes I'm just being lazy and I lay my, my pencil very much down. So again, this is something that you have to try yourself and maybe decide if you like it or not, but I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna show you how it works if you want to use it. This slider right here is going to determine when your pencil starts recognizing this tilt. So if you put it very high, it's gonna, just the, the minimum tilt that you make in your pencil is gonna start altering these properties. So I'm gonna leave it around here in the middle and let's play for example with the, with the opacity. So what this is going to do is the more I incline the pencil, you can see how much it starts going away when it's down. It doesn't matter how much hard, uh, how, ch how hard I press, it's gonna give me a very soft opacity. So that is something cool. Uh, the same thing you can do with the gradation or with bleed if you want some more texture or with size. If you want to have a, an interaction, like the, your brush becomes bigger, the more you put your, your stylus lower. So that is already pretty cool. It gives the, the feeling of, you know, like a charcoal pencil or something like that something awesome to play with but i'm not looking actually for any of this so i'm just gonna drop these guys back to zero and it's gonna get back to normal and we are almost there we have just two more properties is how your brush is shown in the in your folder so for example you can have a stamp preview and what is gonna happen is that i don't know if you are able to see because it's very small we have a small preview of a stamp instead of a stroke right there if you want the preview bigger, you can play with this one and it's gonna make your preview bigger. That is cool. Let's go to the next one. Uh, as much is how your brush interacts when you use it as much. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Maximum size and minimum size, all of this thing right here is very important. These guys are determining what is the maximum size and the minimum size or opacity of these sliders. So for example, look what, what, what happens. If I have this brush, which is almost ready, almost exactly how I want it. And I wanted to paint, for example, all this screen. This is the max size that I can reach with my slider. It's not that big. If I want to change this thing, I'm just gonna tap on the on the brush, go right here, tap on the, on the brush again, and I'm gonna increase the max size. Let's just put something ridiculous, like 500%. I'm gonna go here and look what happens. Now my brush, my max size is much, much bigger. So that is something cool. If you want to increase, I like, for example, my, my airbrushes to be that big. Let's go back here and put it up. Oh, I'm gonna leave this one right here. Make this one and I don't want a stamp preview. The same thing with opacity. And guys, we are almost there. This is the last, the last category. We're going to put, for example, you can put your signature right here. If you, this is the person that made the brush. 
you are going to put your name right here if you want and the name of your brush so let's just type it typing here this is magic magic chalk this is the brush that we were doing the magic chalk i just love how this one works in my paintings and that is it you can put your picture in there and there you go this is how i did my my favorite brush this is an amazing brush to paint with so i recommend you try it i'm gonna probably drop a link in the description if you don't want to go through the whole process of creating it and i hope that that you can make amazing brushes for yourself just before you go if you want to learn more about procreate check out this playlist right here where i go through everything you need to know on how to become a procreate master guys thank you very much for watching this video till the end leave me a like if it was useful and of course subscribe for more content like this i'll see you guys on the next video